Let's start our uh, journey in overcrowded space, uh, trying to understand which is the problem and how we are trying to solve it. So, uh, space actually started to be of interest by chance. It was just an excuse for starting a, a contest in identifying the uh, uh, supremacy in technology some uh, decades uh, ago. So, just to have a scenario in which to identify which uh, is the nations that want uh, the capabilities in uh, being able to uh, reach space first and then and moving uh, towards another planet that actually was just the moon, and that at the end put uh, uh, and have men uh, in space and humans in space. But that was a great occasion because, because opens the doors to the chance of looking at sky, and that reveals to be a great opportunity and a great resource for the humankind. And it takes some decades to understand that and to uh, make the uh, humanity and humankind become uh, space slaves, basically, because all of us, and we saw also in the former presentation, depends on uh, space, even if we are not so conscious of that. And actually, uh, our dependence uh, can be seen in many activities that we do. So in this chart, you can appreciate the dependence that we have and the benefits that we have from uh, exploiting the resources coming from space with respect to science. So this is just a part of what we do from space, and as you can see here, we exploit uh, uh, data coming from there to have a global vision on, for example, what has been uh, said before on an evolution of the carbon dioxide atmosphere uh, during uh, seasons or during long uh, time periods for uh, pollution analysis. So we can also uh, have data to analyze the uh, evolutions and the melting of glaciers that is really important in analyzing the health of our planets, but we can go through many other stuff like the animals' migrations understanding and behaviors understanding, as well as looking at the ocean's uh, current and the, and the tides' uh, interactions with, uh, with the moon. So we are plenty of data coming from there. But this is not the only area, I mean, the science uh, in which we are, again, uh, uh, space uh, uh, slaves uh, somehow. There is also our uh, let's say, uh, daily life uh, from the uh, private uh, uh, point of view, from the working point of view and business point of view and social point of view. So you can see uh, here some very general areas in which we uh, get continuously and da in daily data uh, from space, even if we are not conscious of that. So we have, of course, our pri private life, so uh, mapping, uh, weather forecast that we uh, control every day, some of you uh, for sure does. And then we have the uh, social support for, uh, for example, disaster monitoring or for uh, understanding the more the uh, evolutions uh, of the traffics and the uh, demography and the humans' behaviors. But uh, uh, also, uh, last but not least, the marketing and the uh, profit areas with uh, TVs, uh, comms, uh, and even uh, research uh, uh, searching and uh, identifications for, of course, marketing and selling. So, you see that in this environment, uh, and with such a bunch of uh, limited uh, but uh, 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 quite numerous services that we have from space, uh, we need platform in space. So services come from something that is put in place. And so it was immediate to correlate what happened. So we had a, a very uh, empty and uh, great and infinite uh, resource in our hands, and we started creating a, a jam, a traffic jam in space. So those service comes from platform that stays in around the Earth. So uh, that this is true is actually visible uh, in these nice evolutions in times of what, what happens in the space just in around the Earth. Uh, that is, uh, of course, of our interest. So let's uh, uh, read some numbers. So as you can see in the chart, we have almost launched uh, 8,000 objects in, in space so far, in uh, 60 uh, years uh, almost. But if you look at, at the numbers that are reported in the chart, but only uh, the 8% of them are active satellites, and the rest is what? The rest is basically something that is no more operational, but we were not so uh, uh, scared uh, in uh, having a long 
long view and long-term planning on about what to do with dead satellites. So we are uh, quite uh, uh, filled out and crowded uh, with uh, elements uh, in around the Earth, but we have such a 60% of elements that comes from where. And it's quite obvious to understand where they come from. And if we have uh, uh, created from an empty space a very crowded environment uh, to have such a large amount of service that I showed you before and you are perfect uh, uh, aware of, the probability of, of incidents uh, is, is quite high, of course. And if we don't remove any uh, uh, debris and rubbish that we create, the incidents comes to, to grow up uh, in a cascade uh, uh, way and behaviors. That is what is happening in space. So we got the resource and we create the criticality, actually, being not so aware uh, about the future and having in mind that and assuming that space is an infinite resource that actually it isn't. So, in fact, I want you to uh, have a look of what happens if you have just a, a collision uh, among two satellites. This is a real collision that happened some years ago uh, between a, an active satellite and a dead satellite in space. And what you can appreciate is not only the creations of fragments, but because of the orbital environment and the dynamics, those fragments create. So we are in a round of thousands of fragments and then distributed all over the uh, 3D uh, above our heads. And this is a nightmare, as you can see, for an active satellite that is flying uh, uh, in that region because it became so impossible to uh, drive nicely and to keep on going with the nominal uh, mission in such a kind of environment. And this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, situations uh, is increasing the more and is going to become really uh, something uh, unacceptable if we look at the centuries uh, incoming, if we don't do anything. And we are responsible, all of us, in terms of nations. So, as you can see in the graph uh, in the bottom of the chart, there is no nation that is out of this responsibility. So it's something that uh, has to be taken into account and to be solved, uh, let's say, globally. Uh, the fragments uh, uh, is one problem, so to create incidents and to have uh, fragments in generation is one aspect of the problem, but the other aspect is that one that I was uh, uh, mentioning before. So those fragments are actually projectiles, so you have to uh, keep in mind that these elements, even if they are really, really small in, in the size of a few millimeters, they are traveling uh, at a velocity that is in a round of thousands of kilometers per hour. So if you have such an element that impact an active satellite, you have stuff and events like those reported in the chart. So what you see is uh, an impact with the windows on the uh, uh, international space stations that may jeopardize the pressurizations and the safety of the astronaut inside. The other case that you see is the, uh, an impact between such a fragment with the solar panels that is the life and the resource for any satellites that we have on board. And I want you to have in mind that this means that your service is going to be jeopardized because you have the platform that is not working anymore. And uh, uh, you uh, have to know that satellites behave like males, so they are not multitasking. So if they do something, they do not anything else. So if you have to avoid and slalom in, uh, in between fragments that you have in space, you cannot provide service anymore for that time framework. So that means that you lack your positioning with the uh, navigation stuff that you have uh, in your car. It means that you have no connection for telecommunication in a disaster monitoring or support. So you have a direct effect on the uh, life on the Earth. So it's not just something that says some hundred of kilometers above us, but uh, is related with all of us. So we have a problem. Now we have a problem and we have to solve the problem. So to solve the problem, uh, the, uh, the behavior, so let's say, uh, is basically split it in two. So to put a patch in the past, so to remediate and to relocate uh, the garbage that we created, so catch what we uh, have created and uh, put somewhere else, and to uh, change our behaviors for the future. So uh, try to uh, uh, behave nicer with respect to the garbage that we create. So 
Think of controlling the world, the environment, think in a, a sort of a, a recyclability of satellites and not to create just waste, but to be able to be, uh, uh, let's say, ecological even in space. So this is easy to be said, it's not so easy to be done in space, and this is the translation in space. So we have uh, uh, to remove satellites, and this means robotics while orbiting, so it's not, not just like moving a car from a parking area, it's a little bit more complex. And then as soon as we grasp it, we have also to think of clever way of uh, uh, going somewhere else uh, with uh, that stack. And on the other way around, we have to increase uh, the net of telescopes, radars, and monitoring from ground to control the environment. And on the other side, to uh, think of, uh, 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 let's say, servicing of satellites. So recycling what we already have there with refueling, uh, uh, servicing, and maintenance of that satellites. So uh, let's see if this is a good solution that actually this is a good solution if we do all these uh, uh, actions uh, uh, simultaneously. So if we stop uh, launching systems, this doesn't solve the problem because we still can have some impacts and uh, fragments creations, and so the population will grow in any case. If we just uh, focus on the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, mitigations, uh, this will solve the problem for the futures, but impacts can uh, still happen. So, the best stuff to be done, as you can appreciate in the, uh, in the movies that are uh, in the right part of the chart, is to, to, to do the whole, so to uh, keep on uh, launching, doing the mitigation for the future, so behave nicely in the future, but also removing uh, what is already uh, in space, avoiding to have such a kind of impacts that are really detrimental for uh, the space and the resource uh, that we, ha we have in our hands. And as you can see, uh, the effects uh, to, to be consistent uh, and to be effective needs centuries. We are not talking about weeks uh, here or, uh, or, let's say, bunch of 10 years. So we are talking about bunch of uh, uh, centuries. So, um, uh, as uh, uh, mentioned, to remove objects from space is one of the critical and, uh, let's say, uh, key points uh, in uh, problem solving. And so, what you can see uh, in this chart is the focus on that, because uh, to say just uh, let's start removing that object from space uh, is just a simple sentence, sentence uh, but to technologically apply and succeed in really and actually uh, do this stuff, it's definitely more complex. We can uh, solve the problem, as you can see, ju just, uh, it's not a just. Uh, so, uh, approaching a satellite, grasping with an robotic arm, and then moving somewhere else, or more safely, just uh, capturing it, wrapping it in a net, as you can see in the bottom. But still, this is a, a big complexity with uh, respect to the technology, because it's a new frontier in many aspects that we never faced uh, in space, in, uh, in classical uh, space missions. And so you can see in the list that is in the chart that actually we create a, a criticality, but actually this turns out to be an opportunity as well, because it's a challenge from the technological point of view. We need to understand how to approach an uncooperative system, how to understand how it moves, how to grasp it safely without creating some fragments and more. But we also need to uh, uh, open the door to the international cooperation, so, so to solve uh, these big problems that we have in terms of not not only space again, but on the service that we lean on space. So the road uh, to uh, start removing uh, garbage from, from space is really long. Uh, have in mind that to launch uh, the first uh, uh, mission in that sense uh, will keep uh, in around nine years. And you can see the involvement in Politecnico in that because it's going through the technology development at least for the uh, net capturing examples and some test that has been done in suborbital microgravity environment for uh, testing the technology are reported in the chart. So, just to uh, uh, wrap up in my talk, I would say that uh, uh, the humanity had in hands with space a very uh, great and wonderful and unique resource, but because of a lack of foresight, uh, it created uh, as a waterfall actually a crisis, so a big problem. But 
uh, that, uh, let's say, uh, valley that was reached uh, turned out to be uh, an opportunity. And this is uh, thanks to the uh, uh, human's ingenuity that uh, to solve uh, the technology challenge and to identify a worldwide uh, solutions in, in the international cooperations, identify, again, uh, the positiveness in a problem that was created. But I would say that should be taken into, uh, into our minds that uh, the problem was created in almost 60 years and now we need uh, the double to solve it. So still we turned out the problem in something positive, but uh, uh, maybe that we have to take into in, in, in consideration that prevent is always better than remediate for future exploration in space. <laughs>